So, uh, so as I've already uh, introduced about Wally's data paper, and also focusing on ecological data. So now I'm talking about uh, biodiversity data, especially uh, we, are, we have the uh, practicing on how to uh, publish the sampling event data. I think uh, sampling event data is quite a new data types in biodiversity data. So uh, I encourage you also, so as I is the editor of ecological research, right? So <laughs> probably next session we can discuss how to organize uh, Asian spatial issues. Okay. Also as I said, possible. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is the biodiversity data journals? Uh, most of it also accept the research paper, but also focus on data, uh, biodiversity data, especially uh, tends to have the close uh, collaborate relationship with B, uh, GB. So tends to uh, encourage people to publish the data paper, but also you have to publish the, your data, especially using IPP. So it's reward. So that's why you spend three days here to learn how to use an IPD and a learn Darwin code standard. Okay. And uh, uh, please visit the website. I think uh, at the beginning of the workshop, I already sent you some information about the guideline on data paper and also there's some, uh, a lot of in information on TenSoft website. I, can, I think you can access this, this website by yourself. But if you want to submit data paper to send hands of the journal, UT, Philo Keys, and the Biodiversity Data Journals, you have to read this, this guideline. I think this guideline is not just a, a data paper guideline. It gives you a good, very, very good uh, uh, explanation why data should be open and what kind, uh, why we should adopt the open license. All these concepts are described in this uh, document. I think you can read by yourself. And uh, also publish the data papers on PenSoft. There are some uh, requirements. For example, your data set must first uh, open and publish on open repository. Okay? So GBIF IPD is the first class. So choose this one. Because uh, you already learned the standards and also provide the tools and also uh, if you publish the data, you can get the Darwin Core Archive and the uh, RPF format. Right? And PenSoft provides uh, some advantages because uh, you can use the, you already get the RPF is a uh, manuscript. And the, the manus uh, structure of the man manuscript is quite uh, right, like the uh, manuscript. Uh, you can edit on the PenSoft ed online editorial system. So later I can show you. And besides GBIP IPD, you also can uh, deposit your data on Data1. Data1 is a big project supported by US NSA. And in America, uh, if you researcher want to get funding support from N NSA, they will ask you to write uh, not, not only proposal, another proposal about your data management. So it's called the DMP, Data Management Plan. You have to describe uh, what kind of data product you will provide, generate from this research project, and how you will manage your data, where you will uh, open your data set on an open uh, repository. So it's about uh, N, uh, DMP. And also, Australian government also started to take this way. UK, I think you and, and the EU also start to uh, take this action. So that's a uh, make the uh, data publication be uh, uh, known in scientific research. And also, in US, you can, uh, there, there's a project, KMD is a knowledge ne uh, network for biodiversity, uh, biodiversity comple complexity. So they also provide uh, the platform and tools. I think in Taiwan uh, and Japan, in the uh, past few years, we already I have several training workshops on Merfo and Metacad. Osawa already mentioned the uh, uh, EML. Actually, EML was developed by AMB. And also, Jota's uh, repository is also using Metacad. So if you are familiar with uh, Merfo and Metacad, you also you can deposit uh, your data on KMB and Data1. 
and uh, the other, like a dryad or tree base. Tree base is of, uh, for phylogenetic studies. You can deposit your data on tree base. And the dryad is all kind of data set you can put here, but they did not have uh, a very strict uh, uh, data structure. So if you go to the dryad, you can find all kinds of uh, data types, but uh, the data, data data is not so uh, complete, like uh, IPT or KNB or data uh, this data repository as four. And the, the second very important thing is open data license. I think uh, these days we're already talking about this. On Pensoft, uh, uh, they strongly encouraged uh, authors adopt these three kind of open license. The first one is open data commons attribution license. That's, uh, this license means you completely waive all all, all your uh, rights on the data, but user should cite your data. And the great common zero waiver is the same meaning. And the open data uh, PDDL is also the same. So you can adopt each of them. And uh, they discourage user uh, also adopt the CC by CC by NC or CC by SK. SA is a share like if you might use my my data uh, for your work you have to share the data like me and also uh, CC by we, we have discussed this uh, CC bias mean you cite my data you use my data you have to cite my data right but normally in academics research we write a paper we'll cite others paper it's Already we have done that way. So I, if I use your data, definitely I should cite your data. So you don't have to say about CC BY. It's just the uh, extra things, right? You just give a CC zero and the scholar use the data. Also automatically they will cite your data. So it's, it's a, a natural thing in scientific uh, communities. So if you already prepare your uh, data set, like yesterday we uh, do the practice and imagine you already get a, a published data set on GB, right? So you can get the RTF, you can get the Darwin Core Archive and the EML, your metadata in EML format. So you can go to the Pensoft. So how to go to Pensoft? If you, uh, if you visit the uh, WSD Data Journal website, you can uh, there's a link to the uh, on web page. There's a link to publish data. Okay, so it will give you uh, this page. So if you are first first time to visit to use uh, published data on tens of the journal, so you register come. So later uh, next session you can try by yourself. And when you register, there's three steps. It's quick. You just follow the three steps and get the account and then you log in you can start a, a manuscript I'm sorry so you can get a uh, account and then start manuscript <laughs> everything is done online you don't have to prepare a word file you don't have to worry about the formatting you just do it online the, the the system the whole system will guide you how to do that and uh, if you visit that page you should uh, you can see the uh, the first is the I think it's better using If you visit the website uh, and log in and start a new script, it will ask you to select uh, uh, which 
type of application. You select a data paper, and then you select the which journal, right? And then uh, on the bottom of the page, you can start the manuscript. They give you uh, two options. One is you can directly import. That means you already uh, have your metadata, right? Yesterday I said all uh, the major content is the metadata. So you already have the EML files, so you can directly import. So if you do this way, it will go to this web page. You can choose the uh, EML file. So you just find where the folder you, you have, you put your EML file there. Then it should should start import the EML file. But I tried several times. Almost one hour still nothing come out. <laughs> so I decided to write them later. There is a feedback. So you can on this page. Also, if you, yeah, you have any problem, I just uh, ask them. Yes, this night I ask them, but uh, I think maybe tonight I can get the answer. And uh, also, if you don't know how to use the system, you can, there is another uh, tips, tips and tricks. It's online help. You can just click there, there I can show you how to do, uh, do using the system step by step. So I write a letter and send them. I hope I can get the answer today. And I will show you the information. And so if I cannot do that way, so I have to give up, give up and choose a normal way. If we don't have a EML file, or my EML file cannot upload, so I choose another way, you just uh, start a new script, a uh, new manuscript. So uh, the manuscript is just, uh, you have several sections, it's title, also, it's just similar to your metadata structure. If you, uh, yesterday, you fill in the metadata on IPD. There are several sections, right? The structure is similar that way, but the order is a little bit different. So if you start and you can definitely, you are the author, the first uh, the author in the when you start because you log in by your account, right? And then you can start to add another author. Actually, we don't have to do this if we can normally uh, publicly import the EML file, but currently we can do not. We cannot do that, so I'll show you how to do this manually. So you can add the author one, one by one. Okay. So they will send a message to your co-author. And then you try to input the background, uh, the background information. It's just like uh, Osawans. Osawa-san says, uh, the similar, very similar structures. And you just uh, copy all your content in your metadata. If something is not enough, so you have to, uh, you also can in input on, on this basis, or, or you already have to pay, you can just copy past. So don't have to worry about the uh, format, formatting of the structure. And then, You input the, uh, okay. So I, after you input the, all the content, just copy past using the RTF file you already have. You can, you can download RTF file from your IDP or go to GB website to check out where, where the uh, data set you already published. You can download the RTF file and it just copy past the content to each uh, correspondent sections. So after you finish, uh, you can send uh, a message to tell you your co-author. I already almost finished the manuscript. Manuscript, uh, you can uh, make some, uh, you can make any revision or modification. Right? So that's uh, made the collaboration easier. Otherwise, you have to use a word file. I send you and you you make some revision and you send me, you just uh, uh, waste a lot of time on the collaboration, uh, collaborating on the uh, revision your manuscript. But using this online system is quite uh, easier. 
So finally, we can get this uh, manuscript. Actually, it looks very much like uh, your RTF, original RTF file. But uh, some, you can see the, the here is the outline of this old manuscript, right? <laughs> but as Osawa-san says, um, the, the content of your metadata is still enough, so you have to think pay a lot of attention and a lot of time on introduction sections. So that's the main part, the most difficult part of the data paper. And also, uh, original data data, there is no table, no figure, right? So maybe you can, uh, uh, on the online system, you can uh, upload. For example, you have figure, you have table, and even the citation reference, you can just uh, upload using this section. So the whole thing is done on using the online system. It's very, quite, quite simple. So if they can uh, solve my problem, I, I think this should be more easy. Right? And also, the, uh, how about, well, we already adopted the open data license and then follow the GBIF standards and everything is follow the rule on hands of the race subjects. How about the reviewer? So reviewer, uh, review the data paper should not using the criteria on um, research paper, right? Because we just, uh, data paper is just describe the, the, the value and the, the, all the detail of the data set itself. So, but the, all the description is on the manuscript, right? So re reviewers should focus on the quality of the manuscript. Of course, the data quality is also very important. Right? If the, there is a lot of errors on names, um, and no, no in detailed information on the measurements, so the data quality should, uh, should be improved, maybe even be rejected. And also, uh, this is two important things, but the consistency between this manuscript and the data. So these are three main points for the reviewer to review the data paper. So here I just uh, list uh, some the quality, of, uh, some criteria for uh, evaluating the quality of the manuscript. Okay. So for example, the title abstract the keyword reflect the content of the data paper. I think this uh, this point are also uh, applied to the same with the research paper. So I don't talk more about here. Okay, but the quality of the data, uh, are the data completely and consistently recorded in the, within the data set? If we adopt Darwin core, right, we have to do the mapping and different uh, data table related to the core, uh, when you publish on IBT, IBT will validate your data structure. Just like yesterday, we have some errors, right? So it showed the error message. You have to check the error message so you can pass the pub publication process. So using IBT, there is some advantage to help you to check your data file. Okay? So if you can smoothly publish your data using IBT, I think that the first uh, criteria you already uh, get to be, uh, you already, no, no problem, this, this point is, should pass, right? And does the uh, data resources cover scientifically important, sufficient large regions, time period, is uh, already being asked the same question, right? So it uh, depends on how you explain the importance of your data set. And also depends on what kind of uh, uh, organism you are studying. Common species and rare species, they are different there in conservation, right? also in the data. And uh, uh, our data consistently internally described using every <coughs> standard. Like we're using Darwin core terms, and we're using the Darwin core uh, star schema, so also go uh, through this, right? And the method used to process, analyze the data, right? 
So we, we, we already properly described, I think, in this part is also uh, your view, right? And also the data possible given the pro protocols, right, also are encouraged to report any test undertaken to address this point. So that means if you uh, you publish the data, but maybe you, you you adopt a new method or some method uh, to make the data quality more good, more reliable, I think this is also a point, uh, the very point of your data set. Right? And also the the repository to which the data are submitted appropriate for the nature of the data. I think this is very important. Uh, I'm not criticizing uh, nature of scientific data, but actually, uh, if you go to the uh, scientific data uh, journal and you try to download a data set from the dry ed or some other uh, open repository, you try to read the metadata and uh, read the, the data structure, probably they're still, uh, their the data quality yeah, may be not so good because they will not uh, enforce you to adopt uh, uh, some kind of standard. And uh, some, the metadata is just very simple. It just leaves you some uh, basic description of the author contact information and some, some basic uh, method, but no detailed information. So, I don't know why, maybe just a nature publisher, so it's so famous. But uh, talking about the data quality, I think uh, you publish to ecological research and uh, biodiversity data because the repository itself requests you to adopt some standard. So that ensures the data quality. Okay, uh, so if you, the, the two point you, you uh, the two main points you can uh, completely prove you, I think the consistency between the two parts naturally uh, already, uh, I would say, prove you this uh, reviewer's criteria. Okay. So I think you already see this uh, picture on the first day. So now all of us are the user, right? And then we try to publish the, our data to IPT your national node or regional node, for example, ACP can uh, endorse the uh, public publishing data set from other Asian member state country. And after you publish the, the IPT and the, you have to register to GBIF photo, right? And GBIF photo will generate, uh, will index your data and generate the DOI. And also you, you can use the our uh, EML and uh, RTF file, right? You go to the pencil of the journal online edit, ed editorial system, you can submit your manuscript, and then you can publish to series of pencil of the journals. And when you, your uh, data paper being accepted, so you can add your the, uh, data set DOI to your data paper journal, so people cite uh, when, when they use their data site, the data paper, and also cite the, the source of your data set. So that's why, uh, so that's uh, incentive, right? This mechanism will encourage the scientific uh, data publications. And actually in the past, partly we do the research just only on the, uh, uh, okay. Maybe we just uh, write a proposal and collect the data and submit a, a paper. After that, you maybe you just uh, save your data in a computer. So never manage your data and uh, sharing the data. But I think uh, we are in a crowd age, crowd era, right? So everything is uh, using internet and the web. And even the, you, you can use uh, internet to do data mining, right? So many kind of tools already there. And if we can access the open data using open source tool, that will expand your research area. You can answer more bigger scale questions. So normally our uh, research will include three phase. 
as input, you are uh, thinking how to uh, write a proposal, right? You try to get ideas. Maybe you just do by yourself or with your colleague. But now we are we have Facebook, we have Twitter, a lot of communities on these uh, social web communities. So a lot of discussion there. So you can easily um, promote uh, collaborations, right? And uh, go to the research phases. So we have uh, from the online discussion, we have uh, consolidated uh, ideas, so we can write a proposal uh, co collaboratively. And output, probably you can use some tools like uh, Google Doc, we share documents to the online editing. Right? And then uh, we can, when we, when we have the idea, we have to write a proposal. So we can uh, use in some data management plan tools. And you can use in R or some other tools to help you to do this. And then all this can help you to collect the, the data. And then you can, uh, using the, during this process, research project process, there are a lot of tools to help us. Like uh, these days we learn R, and tomorrow we learn QGIS, all these kind of uh, tools can help us analyze the uh, open data. And then uh, we generate the result, right? Not only, not just only paper, but also the data, data set. So uh, if we can create uh, this cycle, make the, the cycle uh, run just based on the open, open uh, source and open data spirit, so that's the base for future open science research. So in the past, maybe we think uh, data, we, we, we are the owner because we go to the field work uh, and collect the data. So I think data is mine. But for in the open science era, we have to change our mind to, uh, we, are, we don't have the ownership of the data, but we, we have to Rate the data, so it's the data stewardship, and, on, and only through the open data and uh, the data can be uh, freely accessed and evaluated. So all the science research projects is become transparent. Right? So in the open science, everyone can can join, and all the research process become transparent. So that's very important. Uh, point to help us re resolve the regional and global uh, issues. That's all. Thank you. And next sessions, uh, I will leave you to uh, uh, pencil of data journals, or maybe uh, you can maybe uh, currently probably you don't have the manuscript right but you just uh, register come try to download a Darwin core archive uh, no uh, RTF files okay you just uh, practice but don't submit the manuscript <laughs> <laughs> and go back on you when you are ready you can come back to the uh, pencil of the uh, online edit publishing system to try to publish your data paper. Do you have any questions? So the pencil that data of uh, biodiversity data journal can also accept a checklist. Yeah. A checklist sometimes have to have a number of number of references. And uh, uh, that reference, for instance, in a local checklist or national checklist, may be written in, uh, I mean, uh, the references, the part of the references may be not written in English, right? In case of Japan, it should include Japanese. Or in case of China, uh, somewhere like 
word hieroglyphs it's in Chinese in various methods. So do they have any limitation of the, of the letter usage? Sorry, I don't know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you can uh, check. Uh, because they published the checklist, there was a middle key or blue keys. Probably you can check the, the guideline on these two journals. But I think uh, if some, I'm not sure, BHL have some biodiversity, uh, biodiversity heritage library, right? BHL. I don't know this project uh, digitized some uh, <coughs> reference uh, reference in other uh, other than English, I'm not sure. If there's, for example, if there is some Japanese uh, reference on BHL, probably you can, there is a EOI or something you can sign. I'm not sure. You are know, playing the devil's advocate here. Uh, you mentioned that uh, we should go in for CC0 license as opposed to CC BY. Yeah. yeah. And uh, for scholarly journal publications, we have a mechanism to detect plagiarism. So if somebody picks up from your paper yeah. and does not report your reference, you say this article is plagiarized and there are the scientific ethics which deal with it. Do we have any such plagiarism software for detection uh, tools uh, for data? So that we don't need to enforce the CC by it, but CC0 is good enough and automatically people, because of the ethics of knowing that if they are caught, they are in the wrong foot. So, something like that? Uh, I think, uh, I don't know how to answer, but uh, from the, if we, I don't know the, the journal, currently how the journal evaluate uh, you, the manuscript, if the manuscript, this research have incorporated some uh, data sets not generated by the author itself. I'm not sure how currently the, the major journals evaluate this. But I think if we use uh, uh, the data set from different parts, we should, uh, I think in the manuscript, we already described very clearly. Right? But your question is, if I don't describe that source, is there a yes. mechanism so to I trace? have a data, and you take so, it, and yeah. you don't describe it. Yes. Then, is there any mechanism to detect? I think if uh, traditionally we just publish a, a paper, so the paper just include a, a figure or tables, and it's not original data. So in that way, you have you don't have a cannot evaluate or trace the data source. So maybe in the future, I, I'm not sure if the journal uh, will ask for, when you publish the data, uh, paper, also you have to publish your data. Sometimes if they ask you to put your data into uh, uh, supplementary materials, right? But uh, I think uh, maybe in such kind of situation, maybe uh, we should, uh, I would say not we. I think the scientific uh, community should change the shift the paradigm. Right? Not only uh, publish the paper, you have to publish the <coughs> evidence. So make the the whole scientific research process transparent, so everyone can evaluate your data, not just only see the the figure the paper you published. We can go back to check your data. Maybe there's some error there. And we can comment on the data and curate the data, make make, make the data more, how do you say, uh, <laughs> reliable, right? There is a follow-up question. Uh, for example, if uh, uh, there's a site of eBird, and I download, say, one million records from there, and I end up finding out that uh, most of the data is not research-grade data, and I work very hard 
to uh, you know make the data research great if it is not geo referenced ensure that it is geo referenced properly get the relevant metadata in terms of pictures or whatever and have a new data set made from that out of the million records i downloaded probably i can now have only about 1000 or 10000 records which are kind of research grade data for a particular species and if i end up publishing it as a data paper what are the implications for it uh, you mean you uh, improve the data quality and republish a, a new yes i think that, that that's reasonable Right? You, you know, doing the data cleaning is also not an easy task. If, you, if I download a lot of data sets and from the internet, but the important is when you get the data, did the data source uh, adopt the open license? If, the, if, if I, for example, if I release a lot of data set and uh, I adopt the CC0 license, so you can freely use in that and to make any changes I don't care about that, but you can make this data become better. That's good. So you can release, right? Once again, and publish. To uh, you can get the re reward because you publish. Uh, you you spend a lot of time and effort. You can publish your data paper. So paper, but in your paper, you should cite where the data source come from. Right? It, it's just a circle. So when People cite uh, using your better data qualities, data set. So naturally, they will cite you. So it's create a, a circle. It's a live circle, right? If we everyone just uh, CC by CC by, and I, you have a one million records, you have to cite one million citation. Is that practical? So that's why the data uh, hands off the, or CC comma they uh, encourage people. You just uh, release. Uh, uh, release all, all right, abandon all right, and make the, the community, the whole grow more uh, open. So everyone can use the resource. And use the resource, we can solve a lot of problems. We, we don't just lack the, the data in, in country or even in, in an agency, but we need to collaborate to solve the country issue, regional issue, and the global issue. That's why we do science, right? That's just only for SCI. I think most of the researchers just care, care about that. When I publish my data, others will store my data, so I cannot write this. Right? Why not think about it? if you we release a lot of data? Currently, everyone download uh, USGS Landsat data, and the data they already provide the, the good qualities. How many of them cited? How many of them cited? Uh, Very few people. Like I have seen a lot of research which comes to me for review, and they don't cite it. I am asking the question to you. Basically, I see people not citing the data that they have used. So you, as a reviewer, you should re reject that such kind of paper because so they don't cite. Exactly. The point is, are there any tools for that yeah. to ensure that mechanism, yes, they are not citing. For plagiarism, it is easy. Uh -huh. I have I can take it, I'll use it, and I'll finish the job quickly. But there are so many data sources you don't know from where what is coming. And unless the person has declared it himself, it becomes such a difficult job to for Landsat data it is relatively easier because everybody uses it. But everyone also have to cite it, otherwise how to uh, assure the, the data quality. In fact, half the papers I get they don't even cite R that they have used, our software. Uh, which is mandatory to be cited as per their license. So uh, people don't cite it. I, I think, uh, as I listed the points in, in a, a criteria for review the, the data paper or even research paper, such kind of no citation is improper. So reviewers should point out such kind of. The uh, uh, problem is the reviewer doesn't know. So nice. <laughs> the reviewer no, can tell. No. They will assume it's your data. And the you the point is, if it is a CC zero license, uh -huh. they are not supposed to do it. So you can't even say anything. Uh, if the licensing for that is CC zero, you can't even reject it because of that. Right. Yes. That is so true. Yes. My point is that. So you have to have a ground to reject the paper. So the, if the license is CC zero, I don't have to cite. Right. And so I have not cited that. 
However, well, yeah, CC0 doesn't mean that we want to be cited, right? But, uh, well, scientific common sense suggests that uh, any kind of reference should be cited uh, for the reason of reproducibility. So science depends on the repro reproducibility and the objective, uh, to see things objectively, right? And, uh, well, citing data uh, is strongly connected with the uh, reproducibility. Agreed. But can you reject yeah, the paper well, based on that? Yeah, ethics <laughs> may be a little bit different. Sure, sure, why not? Because uh, for scientific research, we emphasize the evidence. You must uh, give us a, a, keep a how to say, reliable evidence. Yeah. You just uh, use the data. You don't tell anyone where the data source. How can I verify your, your result? I say it is my data. You if, it is a, if it is a CC0, and I say it is my data, okay. I can distribute Since this freely. You, it's your data, please publish your data. So I, 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 I already no, no. emphasized that. that no, 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 that's not the question. Yeah. If you have a data, yes. like the troll data which you have yes. published, and if it has got a CC0 license, uh -huh. I take it yeah. and I use it. I don't cite it, the license is CC0. And I distribute it to anybody saying it is my data. You don't have any control over it. My point is that. Okay, you, I intended to do that. I, you give a CC by license. Yeah. I still use that. I don't cite. Do you have an um, I? Do you have an I? I every don't day. Have. <laughs> so My point is, do we have something? You know, being thought about these things. My question is to yeah. stimulate that discussion. Mm -hmm. So I am perfectly in sync with you that we should go in for a CC zero. There is no doubt about it. And whenever you have CC0 licenses, you end up using them, the usage is maximized. For example, all the photographs that are there in Flickr, if it has got a CC0, I, without thinking twice, end up using it in my presentations. Most of my presentations have the photographs from Flickr. I don't even bother asking my colleagues that I need a photograph from you to offer a particular animal. But Got that. Yeah. You mix something together. Yeah. <laughs> we are talking scientific, publishing scientific data. Images, videos, or other multimedia, they have some other uh, different way to keep the license. No, but the same license is apply. No, no. But same I think licenses. That the judgment. The judgment. And you can use it in your publication. Sure, but uh, we are talking about the scientific data. The scope is scientific data, it's not the uh, uh, artist take a photo or make a painting or something else. It's not, we, we are talking about scientific data. No, uh, I don't uh, differentiate between data and scientific data. If something is there and you have captured it, yeah. it is a data, it could be used scientifically, it could be used artistically. That is the choice of the individual. But data is data. So if I have photographed a bird, that is a data. It's an evidence. So there is no disputing that fact. How a person ends up using it, whether artistically or scientifically, is a different volume. Well, it may be the reviewers who is going to make a judge whether they are, uh, whether the, the manuscript is going to be able to be published or not. Right? If the uh, well, reviewers uh, uh, judges that this is not reliable, it, it is not uh, going to be published, so exactly. it won't be the problem, right? No, exactly. How does the reviewer know? I told, I gave you my example. For me, yeah, it becomes okay. difficult. So that's, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Uh, this. <laughs> Sorry. Because, uh, <laughs> you take Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Just, just a point. Yeah, yeah. Food for thought. I don't yes. expect any immediate answers per se, but we have to force GBIF to think about it, we have to force other people to, the journals to think about it. Yes, I think uh, this kind of issue has already been discussed in several times in um, region, Global North meeting and even on the GB meeting. So that's why the GB, GB uh, IT, they paid a lot of attention on um, uh, each, they index each records. So keep the UUID for each record. So the records you can trace back to from which data set and from which author. So maybe, I, I'm not sure it is possible to 
to compare the data. Yeah. So I, I have a related uh, yeah. question. So if we download the uh, thousands of uh, occurrence uh, data points from GB, is that practical to trace uh, the, all the sources of uh, those records inside all of the papers? Or we just assign the data from GB? No, no they, they will keep your uh, data set DOI. So the data, from the data set DOI can trace back to each record. So, so, so if, yeah. if, if I use the, those data uh, to do some research in my paper, so how should I sign the data source? Yeah, you just say these data were cited from GBIT with the DOI. Uh, I'll answer this. Basically what happens is when you give a search criteria, there is a new data set which, gener which is generated from the search engine within the GBIT. And each data set that is prepared based on your search criteria has a unique digital object identifier. You can cite the digital object identifier just so you don't have to cite individual data sets. That is one. And there is one document, uh, the best practices guidelines by GBIL for citation. So you can also have a look at that. But if we also publish a data paper and uh, upload the data to GB, so the, the users won't know, maybe maybe don't know the, the data paper. Because they just get the data from GB and get the DOI and cite the DOI. So they won't cite the data paper associated with So that, uh, maybe I will ask explain the, the figure. There's a mechanism when you submit the data paper, uh, the data paper finally your, your data paper have also have a DOI. And then your data set also have a DOI. So GB and the pencil of the they will collaborate to link these two DOI. So when you cite this DOI, alternative DOI or, or resources link is there to automatically can find each other. So that's why we have to publish data paper and data set and make these this two kind of resources link. Right. I think the, uh, well, his question is uh, yeah. something a little bit different. So maybe we, we, can, we can talk about the later anyway. Okay. So it's about time for tea, yeah. right? Yeah. So <laughs> maybe uh, yeah. come back to him and see. We'll come back on 40. <laughs> okay.